Classroom instructions in English for teachers. The words we use have power. So as teachers, we have to be intentional in our choice of words. We want to focus on positive language and also use group words as it promotes unity. We also tend to use a lot of pleases in instructions to be more polite. Please do this. Can you help me please? Please read that. Being more polite shows the students what you expect them to do in the classroom. Teachers are role models and we should be role models in our language as well. It's also a good idea to include the students in a group by using the royal we. We need to. Let's. Let us do this now. We need to do it together. Try not to say you have to. You must. Unless it is something you really need. If it is something that you want them to do, you may say I need you to. I want you to. When you ask students to do something, phrase it like it's their choice. Students often rebel when they don't have options. Instead of saying, you have to, you must, it is better to say, you may, you can do this if you'd like. But the idea is that they actually have to do it. But it just seems like you are offering them a choice. That is unless it's something important. Then you can push them. You have to study for the test. You should do this homework. I need you to. I want you to. Today, let's look at some classroom expressions and language teachers can use in their classrooms. First, you want to welcome students to your class. When they enter, you can say, hello everyone, hi class, and you can also ask them questions because as the teacher, you need to build a relationship with your students by asking them simple questions. How are you today? How was your weekend? You can give a comment about the weather. Oh, it's so hot today. Make sure to drink a lot of water. Oh, it's so cold today. Stay warm. Okay, everyone, take your seats. Please sit down. When you first introduce yourself, you can say, My name is Mr. Wish. You may call me Eric. In some schools, it is more formal. You either say Sir or Mr. Wish. In other schools, they are more laid back and you can call the teacher by their first name. I will be your teacher this year. You can call me Mr. Wish or Sir. I'll see you every Tuesday for second period. In this class, only one person speaks at a time. So when I'm talking, please listen. There are a couple of rules in this class. So when you first meet your students, you want to give them the procedures and rules so that they know exactly what is expected of them and what you want them to do in the class. If you go into the class without giving them proper rules and procedures, you will have a difficult time later in the year. Class register. When the class comes in, you have to check who's there. Let's take the register. Time to take the register. Or you can say time to take roll call. During your classes, you want to tell the students when it is a certain time. For example, you can tell your students, it's time to study. It's time to clean your area. Nap time. These times reinforce that there is structure in your class. When training students, they need to know what is expected of them and what will happen at which time. Let's see who's here today. Who isn't here today? Does anyone know why Jenny isn't here? Does anyone know where Jenny is? John, 
Why were you absent last week? In class instructions. Let's start today's lesson. Open your books and turn to page 50. Jackie, can you please read this out loud for us? Peter, continue. Jessica, you're next. The whole class read together. Follow along in your book. Read along in your book. What is the answer to number four? What is number four? Jason, what do you think about that? Repeat after me. Time to stop. I'll give you five minutes to finish. Bring your book to me. Show me your answer. Take out your books. You'll need a ruler, so bring one next week. Don't forget to bring your pencil case. Let's begin the activity. I want us to do the work together. The royal we. Answer in full sentences. Say it again, louder this time. I'll be back in a second. Continue your work. You may leave the room. You are excused. Come back straight away. Don't mess around. Don't fool around. When students are working in groups, work well with your partner. The three of you make a group. Stop bothering your friend. Is there a problem here? What is going on here? When there is an issue, start by asking a question. Students are programmed to answer questions. If you charge in there with accusations, you are giving your power away. If you say, oh, you guys are playing around, you are not studying, they can say, no, sir, that's not what's happening. I saw you. No, sir, we're working. And then they'll fake going back to work. But if you go in there, you have the position of power. You are the authority asking questions. So if something is happening, start by asking your students, what's going on here? What are you doing? It seems like you are not doing your work. Is that true? Get them to explain themselves. That puts you in a position of power. Asking for understanding. Does everyone understand? Are there any questions? Are you ready to answer? Luke, what are you supposed to do? Raise your hand if you need any help. If you don't understand, please raise your hand. Is everyone done? Is everyone finished? Sequencing. When you give students many tasks and you have to give them an order in which they need to complete it. First, then, after that, finally. As I said before, in summary. As a teacher, it is also up to you to motivate and encourage your students. Great job! You did really well. I'm so proud of you. Don't worry about it. Try again. You've improved so much. Good. Excellent. Well done. Congratulations. That's exactly what I wanted. I think you can do a lot better. I expect more from you. That isn't what I wanted. If you aren't sure, you can ask me. I expect you to do better next time. That's not right. That's not what I wanted. Try again. Do it over. When students are outside, you can say, please line up. No pushing. No playing with your friend. Eyes to the front. I want you to walk quietly without making a noise. Let's show the other classes how quiet we can be. Classroom management is an important part of teaching. Please settle down, please be quiet, please quiet down, pay attention, don't interrupt your friend. How would you feel if you were constantly interrupted? We'll start once everyone is quiet. A good way to start class is to wait until everyone is quiet. It shows them that you are the one in charge waiting for them to settle down. 
But I don't mean going to sit down and pouting. That is weakness. Smile and wait for them to quiet down before you start speaking. Don't rush the work. I want you to complete it thoroughly. Everyone, you have five minutes left. Please complete your work. Right, and stop. Time's up. Everyone, pencils down. Please pick up that trash for me and throw it away. For me. That implies that they are doing the teacher a favor, which also establishes authority. Please do that for me. You can imagine a grandma asking her kids that way. Oh, please do this for grandma. Oh, please help me with this. That is 50 or 60 years of social wisdom that has taught them that. I am teaching you this now. So you don't need to learn that only after 50 years. To say thank you to me, please like and subscribe to this channel. Also, it would help us a lot if you shared this video on social media. Next, homework. Remember your homework. Do the worksheet for tomorrow. Your homework is page 5 to page 7 in the workbook. Prepare chapter 6 for next week. Do exercise 10 and 12 on page 14. When you end class or greet the students. That's the bell. We've run out of time. Tracy, please collect the books for me. Everyone, send your books to the front and the people in front place the books neatly on my desk. That's all for today. You may leave or you can say that's all for today. You may go. Close your books. We've reached the end of today's class. We'll finish this tomorrow. We'll finish this next class. Is everyone done? That's all the time we have for today. Pack away your things. Put your books away. Clean up around your desk. Make sure your desk is tidy before leaving. Please exit the room in an organized manner. Push in your chairs and quietly leave the room. Goodbye everyone. See you next time. And those are some English classroom instructions that you can use in your class. I'm Eric from Etiquette and I'll see you next time.